Hey, hello everybody, Scott Golden here, Golden Opportunities Coaching. Welcome to those of you who are new, welcome back to those of you who are seasoned veterans of what we do around here. Like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, today we're going to talk about ways to know if your crush is uh, crushing back on you. Uh, that's a very important thing for folks who are trying to find a partner. And there's about half a dozen ways that uh, one can, can check out, at least half a dozen ways I want to talk about in this particular audio. If you have an audio you'd like to hear, please feel free to reach out in the comments below and we can uh, try to make that happen for you in the next little while. Uh, so, like I said, those six things, their eye contact level will be different. So, it basically means that you'll notice your crush is always trying to um, make eye contact with you but then avert their gaze really quickly. You'll see a lot of back and forth. So if a person is just interested in what you're saying, they're going to hold your gaze longer. They're going to hold your gaze for, you know, several seconds. But a crush is going to try to make as much eye contact with you as possible or look at you as often as possible without getting caught looking at you. It's almost like eye contact hide and seek. They don't want people to know that they're interested because again, that fear of rejection is motivating uh, their action. And that is an important thing. And I'll lump this together with the other one, which is they're looking at you as long as other people aren't looking. So the idea behind that is if other people are watching them look at you and can pick up on the habit that they have of maybe staring at you for several seconds in a row or always going back to looking at you when you're speaking or when you're interacting, um, that they will be more likely to try to avert that gaze. Now, if you're in a small group setting or they don't know a lot of people and it's not being noticed, they may be more likely to look at you on a regular basis, but if your friends are around or if their friends are around or someone they feel threatened that could figure out their level of interest in you, they're going to try to avert their gaze as often as possible. However, they're also going to try and feel like they can look at you as much as possible. Again, looking at you and their level of physical attraction as well as emotional attraction and mental attraction to what you're saying is higher than normal. So the idea that they can make contact with you or feel connected with you is a driving focus. And eye contact and, and watching of how you carry yourself is one way that people show that. And another way that people show that uh, is through touch. Now, Obviously, we don't mean physical, you know, groping or anything inappropriate. But um, if you notice a person who has a crush on you is going to edge on uh, the possibility of breaking their physical boundaries limits. So uh, they may cross a boundary and put a hand on your shoulder, pat you on the back, um, maybe place a hand on your knee or just give reason for their foot to touch yours, their knee to touch yours. Now, all of this can be seen as inconsequential and non-deliberate touch. The idea is they want to create an image of closeness with you. They may hold their face closer to yours. Obviously, we're not talking during the pandemic, but, but in a general sense, there's that boundary of, wow, you're getting really close to me. But the idea, again, is not to be noticed. So, Let's say someone's sitting next to you and their knee touches yours. They may even apologize for that just to see it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hunt and peck type thing where they're looking for the validation of are you um, going to reject them for touching you or are you going to smile and nod or just kind of shrug and you're comfortable with it. This is a way that people use and it's a a non-scheduled cueing to figure out, hey, is this person comfortable with being in close physical proximity to me? Now, a lot of times this isn't even deliberate. It's, if we've seen it in movies, it's the old, oh, on and then reach the arm over and wrap it around the girl. You make it look like you're not being deliberate, but by the end you are being deliberate. And if she doesn't shy away, at least in the 1960s, 1970s sitcoms, it means you've made progress. Um, but that those type of things, although now much more subtle, are still activated today. Um, obviously, choices in clothing are, are 
another thing. And so when I when I mean choices in clothing, you'll notice that they, meaning the crush, is more concerned with looking good. You may see them purchase new clothes. You may see them wear uh, different color combinations. They may randomly ask you, gee, uh, what's your favorite color? Or do I look good in these jeans? They may, they're going to ask for your opinion. And then you'll notice that they're dressing in things that they think you're going to like. Again, that is a more deliberate thing because they're trying to accentuate their own attractiveness uh, to you. So um, if someone asks about their favorite color out of nowhere and they've been making extra eye contact, these are signs that you may be dealing with someone that has a crush. Now, that's not 100%, but it's more likely than not. And then, you know, but also, too, they're going to be more likely to compliment little changes you make. So... Someone that has a crush, if they really do have a crush on you, they're going to make it as quick and innocent as possible. It's going to take 5 to 15 seconds, but they'll say something like, gee, I noticed that you did something different with your hair, or gee, that that blouse or that shirt or those pants really bring out your, your eyes or your hair or whatever. And so you're going to notice a consistency of compliments that can seem innocent, but it's the consistency of the compliment that shows interest, not so much the compliments themselves, because what they're trying to do is figure out what your understanding is of their intention. And so if they're deliberate and inconsistent and consistent, not inconsistent, with y their compliments, they're figuring sooner or later you're going to figure out that they're attracted and do something about it so they don't have to. That's kind of where that comes from and, and, the, and the derivation. And then the other and final thing I want to touch on, uh, once again, this is a shorter audio than normal, is they're going to hype themselves. So every story is going to be a little exaggerated. Every experience is going to be the best or the worst. or the And you're going to hear hyperbolic terms, and the reason for that is they're trying to appear more interesting to you. Uh, than they would to other people. And if you notice, they're less animated both physically and facial expression-wise when they're talking with other people. But if there's a crush there when they're talking to you, it's huge and it's it's wide and it's varied. And we can even see that played out in movies, right? Like when there's attraction that's played out even by actors. The mannerisms of a person get bigger and wider and larger because they're trying to make the connection through the storytelling process. And so these are just some things that if you are noticing these changes in behavior, you may have someone that's got a crush on you and you've got to figure out what to do with, um, with that information, letting them down slowly and, or not slowly, but letting them down kindly if you're not interested and proceeding accordingly if you are interested in any way. Until next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment.